So these are our, two of our on-fire ladies in the church that love God, have been in the church a long time and serve God. And they went on a trip to Israel, and they had some observations on this trip that I want them to tell you about before I come preach. So give Teresa and, and Sherry a warm hand to welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to share briefly uh, some places that were of most interest to me. Uh, one was the Galilee area, and it's a region all around the lake um, or the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus actually spent the majority of his time in his ministry. Um, and in that area, actually north of that area, is the Golan Heights, which is a range of mountains in northern Israel that borders Lebanon and Syria. This mountain range is really a strategic um, military hold for Israel, and it was obtained in the 1967 war. About two-thirds of that territory belongs to Israel. The rest of it belongs to Syria. The highest point of this mountain range is Mount Hermon, and it stands over 9,200 feet and snow-capped most of the year round, and, and it's Israel's only ski area. But the draw of that area for me to this place is that at the foothills at Mount Hermon is a place known as Caesarea Philippi. And this is where Jesus took the disciples to that area. And that area had actually been used in times past as a worship area for Baal. And they are also at, uh, known to have living uh, sacrifices at that area. So here, also known in that area, was uh, the gates of hell, okay? So you remember in the scriptures that this is the place where Peter was asked by Jesus, who do men say I am? And Jesus, or Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So also at this place, Jesus said that I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, okay? So, but also at the highest point, this was at the foothills of Mount Hermon. And then at the highest point of this foothill is Mount Hermon. And it's believed to be the high mountain that, G that um, Jesus took Peter, James, and John to. And where Jesus was glorified, transformed, or transfigured as we know it, appearing with Elijah and Moses. And the Almighty declared there at Mount Hermon that this is my son. And listen to him. So that was a place that was most significant for me. Hi. Um, as a lot of you know, Rose and I went to Israel seven years ago, and ever since that time, we'd been contemplating going again and taking a group of people with us. So this year finally seemed like the time to do that. So we met with Pastor Rob to explain the vision and to let him know that we wanted to invite others to go and to get his blessing upon that. And he agreed with that. And last time we went, along with this time, we studied this study called the Watchman on the Wall. Pretty good-sized study. In fact, we met this time since about last April, and we went at the end of September. But the study is broken up into three sections. Uh, there's foundational information, which covers, like, why would you even stand with Israel and God's everlasting covenant? Uh, becoming an informed intercessor. So that taught us how to pray for the Jews and for the Arab people. And then also to become articulate ambassadors. It, we learned about the era of replacement theology and about media, myths, and misconceptions. So after we opened it up, there were 19 people. You can go ahead and put that up, Velma. 19 people signed up and went with us. The majority of those were from the Wake and Breakthrough class, but there were about six others from another state, another campus, other congregations, and that was our group of 19, minus Jared's picture in there, because he didn't feel well that night, who went to Israel. So um, a couple of the things that I wanted to talk about was, after going through the study a second time, is uh, how to become a better informed intercessor. So one of the things that spoke to me was the Ramparts Walk. And this was where we're all on the wall, marching around the city on top of the wall from uh, Jaffa Gate to Zion Gate. Um, it's really interesting because you can get a really good view of the whole city. Go ahead, Velma. There's Tresai. And then the next one. Here's a view of the Temple Mount, and you get this visual of the whole area that helps to uh, 
assist in your prayers. And also it was uh, being on that wall helped me to really connect to that watchman on the wall. And also when you go there, you get those visuals. You get like motion pictures in your head when you're reading the word or when pastor's preaching. So I highly recommend going there. Um, one of the other things, next one, and then the next picture. One of the other things, and Teresa talked about the Golan Heights. When we went up north to the Golan Heights, when you're standing there and you're overlooking that valley and, and the mountains out beyond, on the left-hand side, we were looking towards Lebanon, and in the center, we were working, looking towards Syria and the right towards Jordan. We were only about 30 miles from each of those countries, so it really brought home how close those countries are to the borders of Israel. And in this picture, that road and the building in the middle, the white, that's, that's actually a checkpoint going into Syria, which was within walking distance of us. And not too far ago, it flew an ISIS flag on top of it. It was captured by ISIS. So our prayers helped to push back the enemy. And, you know, even just in the last two weeks, they've dismantled the stronghold of ISIS there in Syria. So it's very important, and that gave me great visuals to help me to connect with what I'm doing here at home and what you are doing. Um, even though they are surrounded by the enemy or darkness, the Israeli people and the land are prospering. The desert is blossoming. Isaiah 60 verses 1 and 2 talks about how sin and darkness is growing, and it will continue to. But in the middle of it all, we need to arise and show his glory. Israel's prospering in the midst of darkness. That speaks about the great name of God and Yeshua, Jesus. And by the way, even though they're surrounded by enemies, there was not one point in time, not even a little second, that we feared for our safety whatsoever. And yet, while we were there, the tragedy was happening here in Las Vegas, and then after that, in New York City. So don't let fear keep you from going. Also, there's so much to see. Last time, we saw some things we didn't see this time. This time, we saw some things we didn't see last time. And I know Pastor Troy and Nancy have seen things that we didn't get to see. So there's always something new, and they're always uncovering something each time. So the last picture is the sunset over the Mediterranean. It is just beautiful there. We had our last meal on the beaches of the Mediterranean Sea, and this was the last parting shot. Um, so you know what? We're blessed to be a blessing, so consider going. I want to end with the Shema, which is a Jewish prayer that we sang every morning on the bus. It's from ancient times, and the Jewish people sing that morning and night, and they also sing it almost as a national anthem. So we are going to uh, sing the Shema, and the words will be below what it means in English, and it's taken from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Feel free to sing along. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kivod Malchuto Wow. Thank you so much.